Okay. So first of all, how are you feeling? We're, we're one day out. I mean, the tension in the astronomy community, you know, you could like cut it with a knife. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we have been waiting for this day, some of us for, for 30 years. And it's uh, uh, such, so many eggs in one basket right, such an expensive project, so large a fraction of the resources of the astronomy community have gone into it, and it's, you know, really well designed, but still super complicated, so the risk that something could go wrong is very real, oh. and, and so the next month for us is, is going to be just a constant uh, tightrope. There's something happening almost every day for the next month that could, you know, it has to go right. Right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Uh, the launch site is the Le Centre Spatial Guyane, the Guyana Space Center uh, in French Guiana, uh, which is a little bit of France in the in the Caribbean jungle in in South America. Uh, so it's sort of a colony of France. Well, formally, it's it's. Uh, it has the legal status more like Hawaii in the US, uh, right? So it's officially fully part of France, but they treat it, you know, not always so great. Um, and uh, uh, they've been launching rockets there uh, since 1970. Uh, and uh, this Ariane 5 rocket first flew in 1996. Uh, and it's a pretty reliable rocket. Uh, the current model, the Ariane 5 ECA, uh, has about a 98% success record. Uh, and it's a big beast. It has two enormous solid rocket boosters on either side of the main core. Uh, and those boosters will, will uh, fire for about two minutes, pushing the thing up through the lower atmosphere and then fall away. Uh, unlike SpaceX, no, uh, the Ariane is totally throwaway. No bit of it is is reused. It doesn't come back to a landing. Uh, and, uh, and then the core stage, which has this uh, liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine, really powerful, uh, really advanced technology, pushes on till it's almost in orbit. And so about eight minutes, almost, between eight and nine minutes after launch, that engine shuts down and separates from the upper stage. And so the core stage carries on in an arc up to uh, maybe a thousand kilometers above the earth and then falls back down in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So it's launching east from the north coast of South America across the Atlantic towards Africa. And, uh, and the upper stage kicks in, it's a couple hundred kilometers up now, uh, the uh, Etage supérieur cryogénique, the, the cryogenic upper stage, which, uh, which fires its engine for a long, long burn. Uh, it, it's actually going to fire for 16 minutes, uh, this, this rocket engine, uh, boosting web faster and faster and faster uh, until it's about 1,400 kilometers, so about 1,000, almost 1,000 miles above the Earth and going at about 11 kilometers a second, about 25,000 miles an hour. Just a hair short of escape velocity. Wow. And the rocket stage separates, Webb is on its own. And, they've, and, and Webb is now in an orbit, huge long elliptical orbit, right? That, that whose low point is just a couple hundred miles above the earth, mm -hmm. but whose high point is a million miles high. And it that's a long orbit. It's much bigger than the, the orbit of the moon, right? It actually takes a month to just coast to the high point of that orbit. Wow, I bet. <laughs> and that high point is right on the balance point between the Earth's gravity and the sun's gravity. If it were just a little bit beyond, it would go into orbit around the sun, drift away from the Earth, uh, and if it were a little bit less, it would come back down to close to the Earth. And so, um, so the idea is that actually when they fire the Ariane to, uh, uh, in this first 
20, uh, 27 minutes from French Guiana launch pad to separation from the rocket. Mm -hmm. uh, that's leaving it, it's still, as I say, pretty close to the earth at the end of that 27 minutes. Uh, but it's got it so much speed that it's going to coast up for the next month uh, before before slowing down. And and it, it's targeted so it just doesn't quite make it to the destination. And there's a really good reason for that, is that if you were to, you never quite know with the rocket whether it's going to run hot or cold, you know, whether it's going to overperform or underperform. And if it overperformed and shot it beyond L2, beyond the target point, there's no way to pull it back. Yeah, it would coast coast in orbit around the sun. Mission would be lost, and so you deliberately undershoot. And then, about twelve hours after after launch, you just yeet it a little bit more. Use the word "yeet" for the first time. I'm very proud. <laughs> uh, you 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 spritz the the rocket engines a bit on James Webb. James Webb has its own little rocket engine. Uh, and uh, that will uh, make up most of the deficit. And then a, a two days later, does another little very small spritz to make up whatever's left. And so that way by kind of, you know, undershooting, but then making it up in little bits as they go along, they can make sure they don't go too far. Right. Because that would be bad. Uh, and, uh, and so that's really, and then it, it just coasts out after that first couple of days, it just coasts out for a month out to L2. And when it gets to this L2, this magic point that is a million miles towards midnight. And at L2, it spritzes its engines again to stop basically to, to lock it into an orbit where it orbits around L2. Right. And so what is L2? L2 is this, this uh, um, is named after a, a guy called Joseph Louis Lagrange, uh, who in the 1770s, I think, right, right back during the uh, American Revolutionary War, uh, did the math of how you could balance the Earth and the sun's gravity. And so what happens is if you're in orbit around the sun, a little bit outside of the Earth's orbit, so further from the sun than the earth is, you want to go, it, it's going to take you longer to go around the, the, uh, the sun. So your year is a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, and the way it works is you actually go slower. And so the earth and the inside track goes fast. You're falling behind on the outer lap. If you think of like runners on a, on a track, right? On a circular track. Uh, uh, the Earth is on the inside track, uh, Webb is on the outside track, it's falling behind. If Earth didn't have any gravity, but Earth does have gravity. And so Earth's gravity actually tugs it that little extra bit from what it, how it would orbit otherwise, so that it drags Webb along with it. Wow. And, and so that you just you get it just right so that Earth can just drag Webb along to make it go at earth speed rather than the speed that something would normally have that far out. And, and that's the magic of the, of the L2 point. Uh, and so it just sits there always on a straight line, sun, earth, web, that, uh, or sun, earth, L2 is the straight line. Uh, and as the earth goes around the sun, it drags, drags uh, web with it. But actually web isn't gonna be sitting right at the L2 point. It's gonna be in what we call a halo orbit orbiting this invisible point in space. Wow. As if there were something, you know, pulling it there, but there isn't, there's nothing there at L2. It's just okay. all the math of how the sun and the Earth's gravity attract. Uh, and, and that's a big loop around L2. The size of this loop is bigger than the size of the moon's orbit around the Earth. Wow. So, so it's actually not really exactly at L2. It's like half a million miles out of, for, around it. Uh, and so it's a big spot. So you can fit lots of spacecraft in L2 with, with big loops like that. So that's where it's trying to go. And between here and there, it's gonna unfold all its little bits because to fit in the small nose cone of the rocket, it's all like cramped up and folded up. <laughs> and, and, uh, is that your and, best uh, James Webb impression? Is that yeah, exactly. This is, this is my James Webb impression. It's sort of like, 
I'm not, I don't do enough yoga to do a good one, but um, uh, it, 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 it's, and so, you know, once the nose fairing comes off and it's off the rocket, it starts to stretch, <laughs> right? And it unfolds its uh, solar array first because it wants electricity and it unfolds its rocket engine. And then it, um, like about three days after launch, it was already past the moon at that point, it, it unfolds its sunshade. Mm -hmm. And that takes mm, a while, that takes uh, <coughs> uh, about a week <coughs> to really stretch out this fabric sunshade. And what happens is, so when it's uh, operating right, its back is to the sun and the earth, heating it. And it's quite toasty. And it's dark side, if you go to the dark side, the dark side of Webb uh, on the other side of the sunshade uh, is like minus several hundred degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. There's hundreds of degrees between the, the light side and the dark side in this little thing. So this sunshade is amazing that it can do that. Uh, and then they have little mechanical coolers on the cameras themselves. So the coldest camera, the MIRI it's called, which is the mid infrared instrument, um, is actually only gonna be seven degrees above absolute zero. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> so that's like minus 440 something degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my God, <laughs> terrifying. Yeah, worse than North Dakota, Ellie. Yeah, yeah, that's a little- was it North or South Dakota you lived in? South, but there South, was yeah. I mean, yeah, South Dakota. All right. So worse, it was it's worse than South Dakota in this instrument. It's <laughs> minus 440. So, uh, so you know, uh, these things have to be chilly to work right. And so that's why you need the big sunshade. Uh, and then it has to unfold the telescope as well. That's all folded up. And that's, you know, you have to phase that so accurately because you've got to get it to within a wavelength of light. And so there's all little adjustments that get made over the most of the next month. In fact, it's actually going to take probably uh, three months to get the mirrors properly aligned and in focus. Uh, and then a little longer to get the cameras properly cold enough and to get everything aligned just right. And so we're actually not going to get any pictures from Webb for six months, most likely. The engineers will get like fuzzy, crappy pictures, but but they're not going to show you those because then you'd go, oh, web's a disaster. So they're going to wait until they've actually got it, you know, properly aligned and taking proper pictures before they show you any. And uh, and so so that's going to take about six months to get it all sorted out. So wow. so it'll be that long before we know whether it's really working right. So it's going to be a stressful six months for the astronomy community. So. Yeah, like what is your prediction for tomorrow? I mean. Well, the weather looks good. Uh, the, um, the rocket's ready to go. Uh, Ariane, you know, it occasionally has last minute hiccups, but mostly it goes on the first try. So, uh, so I think we'll see. I think we'll see 720 uh, Eastern tomorrow. Uh, we will see those big solid boosters light. And once that happens, once the solid booster is light, it's it's not like you know with uh, with a Falcon Nine, say when you light the liquid engines, they they can shut them down immediately before it launches if something goes wrong. Nah, once the solids ignite, man, it's going somewhere. <laughs> There's no way to stop that thing, and hopefully it's going the right direction. And uh, and yeah, I I predict that uh, by um, uh, eight a.m. Eastern. Uh, Web will be after 30 years of development, uh, separated from its launch vehicle, whizzing out at 25,000 miles an hour toward L2, and uh, and then the real fun begins, right? And then then we start the deployments and uh, just uh, um, you know one after another of nail biting moments that we get uh, over the next month. Yeah. Um... Wow, I it's crazy that it's going to take so long even just to find out if it works. Um, if you could just give me like your your number one concern. 
Yeah. The thing I'm most worried about is the sunshade because the sunshade's made of these sort of fabric-y things that they have like, I think it's, I don't remember if it's five or seven layers. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, imagine you're like on a sailing boat and you're, you're like tightening the sails. It's sort of like that. And, you know, but you're in space in a vacuum. And so things have a tendency to stick together. Things have a tendency to, to um, and then they could rip or something like that. So, they're all, you know, this is a very new technology and, uh, and we don't have a lot of experience in deploying things like this in space. It's got to go just right. So that's, that's number one worry. And number two worry is just the alignment of the mirrors. Uh, because you're trying to make one big mirror out of a lot of little segments and the precision that's required at like the micron level to get those lined up right. Uh, and they have, you know, they have very fine control over, over how they can move the mirrors. But even so, all it takes is for one of these things to like hang up and not be willing to move and, and right. you can have a real problem. So, uh, and there's not, you know, out at L2, you're not going to be going to visit. Right. Right. And even if you could, right, I mean, maybe, you know, worst case, right, you could get Elon to put a rescue mission together, send a dragon out there to L2 on a Falcon Heavy. Uh, anytime you get, like, a spaceship or an astronaut near it, you're going to hopelessly contaminate the instruments. Yeah. And so it's not, it's probably not doable, right? It's not designed to be to be fixed. Although, Interesting. I've, I've heard 30 years of them saying, you know, yeah, this is going to be out at L2. We'll never be able to fix it if something goes wrong. Just in the last week, I've heard Thomas Zerbukin, the, the NASA science head, start to go, you know, after we get this thing launched, we're going to start looking at how you could service it and extend its life. Wow. So, you know, maybe in the new era, the technology is going to be there. Uh, to uh, to let us consider doing that, but but uh, that's that's a real switch around just in the past week in terms of I think they've just been trying to keep us focused on getting this thing working. Don't, you know, don't don't rely on a fix because it's right. going to be out there. So um, so we'll see we'll see what happens. But uh, then we start looking at you know the light from the very first galaxies uh, that's been uh, coming our way for. Uh, over 10 billion years and uh, uh, we start to uncover those secrets of how the first stars formed, how the chemical elements formed in the early part of the universe, uh, all the events that eventually led to the formation of the earth. Wow. Wow.